we have a filter paper soaked in buffer solution. So first of all, if you do not know what a buffer solution is, I suggest you go to my playlist on further aspects of equilibria where I've talked about acid base equilibria and buffer solutions and you'll get a more clear idea about what we are going to do next if you go there. So we have a pH paper soaked in buffer solution. So let's just for today's example with the example that we are going to do right now. Let's just take the pH of this buffer as 6.2. I've taken the pH of this buffer as 6.2. So uh, then we have amino acid mixture placed on the filter paper. So don't get confused that it is placed on the glass slides. It is placed on the filter paper. The glass slides are just placed above and below the filter paper to like just support it. And so that we can view it clearly. So uh, the amino acid mixture is placed on the, on the filter paper that is soaked in buffer solution and the glass slides are placed on top and below the filter paper. So but now for example, we have an amino acid. One of the amino acids in the mixture is this. So this is one of the amino acids in the mixture. And uh, I want, so what happens is that you know that uh, the, the amino acids at neutral pH, they exist as bitter ions, but uh, they have something called the isoelectronic point. So for example, if the isoelectronic point of this particular amino acid is 6.2, it means at pH 6.2, it exists as a bitter ion. So I, again, I repeat, if the isoelectronic point of this amino acid is 6.2, that, that means it at pH 6.2 it exists as an amino as as this bitter ion sorry it exists as this bitter ion at pH 6.2 which means it will have an NH3 plus here and it will not have an uh, an H atom over here and instead it will have a negative charge over here so since the charges cancel out since it is neutral it can neither travel to the positive side nor can it travel to the negative side because the charges are equal. So the overall charge is zero. So it stays at the center. It will stay at this point, the center, because uh, it, it can neither go uh, towards the positive side nor the negative side since it has no overall charge. But what, and this is because the pH of the buffer solution was the same as the isoelectronic point. But what if for the same amino acid, the pH of the buffer solution is 8. Now, the pH of the buffer solution is 8. It means that it is more alkaline than the, than the amino acid. So what this means is that uh, the, so the isoelectronic point, what it tells us that the pH above the isoelectronic point will be more alkal alkaline for the amino acid and a pH below the isoelectronic point will be more acidic for the amino acid. So, if the buffer solution has a pH of 8, then we don't have a bitter ion this time. What happens is that we, uh, the amino acid will lose a proton. It will donate a proton to the buffer solution because the buffer solution is more alkaline and alkalis or bases like to accept protons. So since the buffer solution is more basic or more alkaline, it will like to accept protons and hence it, uh, the amino acid will lose a proton and the amino acid is losing a proton. So we will have just this proton going away from the acid group and a negative charge. So now if the pH of the buffer is eight, the amino acid has lost a proton. So since the amino acid has lost a proton, it now has an overall negative charge. And since it has an overall negative charge, it will travel towards the positive electrode towards here. It will travel towards the positive electrode because uh, uh, neg uh, negative and positive attract. So it will travel towards the positive electrode. So we will see a spot some, somewhere over here. We will see a spot on the filter paper representing this amino acid somewhere here. And uh, ho however, so this is the case if the pH of the buffer is greater than the pH of the isoelectronic point. However, if we have a 
buffer with a pH of 4 for example. So this time the buffer has a pH of 4.